Hello everybody, it is 3.30, which of course means it is time for one of our afternoon STEM shows here at the Headwaters Science Center. I'm Ryan, one of the educators here, and today in front of me, you'll see I have three different computers. And so what I want to do today is we're going to crack open each of these computers, and we're going to take a look at kind of what they look like inside, see how things have changed over time. Because these are three computers that each are, you know, seven, eight years apart in between each of these. So on my far right over here, we have a Acer Acros 486SX33 from 1993. We have a Compact Presario here from uh, 2001. And then we have this, uh, not a pre-made one, one that was uh, custom built in uh, 2013. And so, like I said, I think what we're basically gonna do is crack them all open, see what's changed, see what stayed the same between, like I said, about 20 years worth of computers here. And so I think we'll start, why don't we start with our most familiar? Let's start with the newest one. And so like I said, this is a custom built one that was originally assembled in 2013, but this is actually basically the computer that we use kind of everywhere in the Science Center, like the one that we're streaming off of right now is a little different, but uses the same case and a lot of the same parts that this one has. And so I think, actually just to start, let's we'll take a look at our backs here. Take a look at what kind of ports we're dealing with. And so, a couple things that are gonna be the same. You'll see a few connections that look familiar between each of them, like this blue one here. You'll see is on all three, and even it's not blue on this one, that's the same connection there. And so that is uh, for a VGA cable. So that's a cable that you would use to attach the computer to the monitor. It's a visual cable. Um, Another one that's there on all of them are these two here. And again, this one doesn't have the color coding, but those are the same ones. And so those are kind of the old mouse and keyboard cables. And so nowadays you don't see mouse and keyboard use that anymore um, so much. They I mean they can. But basically any mouse and keyboard you buy now is going to use USB. But you'll still see, still see some computers that still have those ports in them. And like I said, you go back further than a few years and suddenly it becomes the only thing because USB is really not much of a thing yet at that point. Uh, as far as stuff that's staying the same, the power cable has not changed. Still is the same even on one that you would get in 2021. Still uses that same power port there. Um, what are some other things that are maybe a little different here? Ooh, here's a good one. Uh, this guy here. I actually don't know off the top of my head what this one is actually called, this port. You can see this one has it, it's pink in this one. And we actually don't have one anymore on this newer computer. And so that's the one that has been obsolete for a while now. You really don't see that port being used anymore. And it was a port that was, as far as I ever saw it used, was like exclusively for printers. Uh, but printers pretty much all just use USB these days too. And so that's one, that big long one with all the pins in it that, you said, was pink for a long time. But, you know, this one's even pre that color coding has gone away over time. Uh, Ethernet cable is there on these two. I wouldn't be surprised if there's no Ethernet port here. Um, actually, it does have one. It does have an Ethernet, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but one thing that this one doesn't have that these other two have is a phone jack in the back. And so before we used Ethernet cables for internet, you would have to use dial-up internet, and dial-up internet used your phone line. And so these two are from a time when dial-up internet was very common, so they have a phone jack in the back of them, whereas our newer one, um, where I don't even know if you can get dial-up internet anymore, I don't know if anyone even offers it these days, but doesn't have a doesn't have a phone jack in the back of it anymore, but still has that ethernet cable for your internet. So, anything else crazy interesting back there? Some audio jacks that are here on all three of them, like a microphone and a headphone jack. That pretty much covers it. And I think we have on the back. Obviously a lot more USB ports you're seeing because like I said, a lot more stuff uses USB. So a lot of the attachments that we have in computers now, they've kind of standardized that all into one port, whereas it used to be a bunch of different ports. And so you'll see, like I said, kind of more variety back here, whereas this one, you get rid of a lot of the variety and just replace it with USB. I think we're actually gonna crack these open now. And this is kind of an interesting process in its own right, how opening computers has changed over time. This one just has supposed to be two thumb screws, but I lost one of the thumb screws and I was setting up today. Um, so two thumb screws, and then this one just pops right off like that, and there's our computer. 
This one has an interesting little doodad on the back. It has this little plastic wiggler that you gotta slide down. But then, once you slide it down, basically the same thing. Right there. And this one is a whole ordeal to get open. <laughs> I was having to, I was practicing with this one before we actually started the, uh, started the show because I didn't want to spend 20 minutes having to figure it out on camera. And it's got all these little slidey plastic bits. Am I on camera? It's got all these little slidey plastic bits that gotta come out. And then, yeah, spin it around. And it's got a couple little slideys down here to take the front panel off. And then it's got these two clips on the side that you got to pull off. And slide back. And there you go. <laughs> and so, I said we'll go right in and kind of look at some compare and contrast these stuff inside here now. Holy moly, that compact one is dusty. <laughs> um, but again, let's start out with some things that are still the same. And a lot of the components you're going to see are still have, you know, the same name. It's still the same type of component, even if, you know, they look a little different from generation to generation. So the thing that you're going to see in all of them right off the bat that's going to occupy a lot of the space in there is going to be the motherboard, which all three of these have. So in this one you have, this black one is the motherboard here, just the big square. Uh, this one, same thing, pretty much in the same position, except it's green now. This one is a little trickier to spot because it's kind of down in the bottom, but this bottom one here would be the motherboard. And so the motherboard is the thing that basically all the rest of your components are plugging into. Um, basically, it's a, it powers everything. That's like where your power supply connects into and then it redirects power to all your other components is more or less what a motherboard does. Some other things that are going to be the same in all three of them, even if they look a little different. Uh, the hard drive, so the place where you're storing all your information on your computer. So in this one we have, actually pull this one out, a little two and a half inch SSD in this one. Get it. So two and a half inch SSD there. And this is, I think, a 70, 64 gigabyte hard drive. So pretty small by today's standard, 64 gigabyte hard drive. And this is something that you would basically just have like Windows installed on. So it works for this type of unit where we're just using it for like word processing and browsing the internet. But if this was something you had like at home, you would probably have a different one in there. Um, this one, I'm not gonna pull out because it's really buckled down in there, which is something that you see in a lot of these old computers is the parts are really in there. It's a lot of snapping and popping plastic components out. It's a lot of taking out screws. It's a lot of unplugging ports and unwrapping wires to get anything out of there. Um, but what you'll see inside this one is a three and a half inch hard drive with a uh, PETA port on it. So it looks something like this um, that's in there. And this is something that looks pretty similar to how like modern three and a half inch drives look. So this would be a more current one. You know, it's a little fatter, the port at the end's a little different, but basically it's using the same format, it's just a little bit different connection at the end. You can just buy an adapter that would work, that would change this directly. Um, but you can see, our modern one, actually, even though it's a much bigger hunk of technology, actually still uses the same port. So it's called a, a serial ATA or a, a SATA port, whereas this one is a... I said a PETA port, and then what's the P stand for? I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but it's older, and again, you just really don't see this anymore. But that's what would be inside this one. And uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting is the power cable in that one is different. So this one, that's fine. Uh, the power cable on this one is uh, this kind of wider one here, whereas the power cable on this one is over here, and this is what's called a Molex cable, which, again, is one you don't really see anymore. So that guy uh, looks an awful lot like the cable you would have like on a boat trailer, basically for like the lights of it. Uses more or less the same type of cable. A little different size, but same technology basically. And if we go all the way down here, 
again, this one basically looks the same. So this is actually another uh, PETA hard drive. So it's going to look, has this same connection on it with a Molex cable. The thing that's kind of interesting about this is how much circuit board is on it. And uh, you can see even though this hard drive is, does it say on the case anywhere how big that hard drive is? 600 megabyte hard drive, um, whereas this one I think was a 20 gig, 40 gig hard drive. So same same type of drive, um, but let's see, 600 megabytes versus 40 gigs. This one is like uh, almost 100 times bigger. <laughs> Not quite, maybe 70 times bigger than this one is as far as the storage capacity. Say, and this one is even bigger than that. This one's a 64 gig versus a 60 gig. And you can see, you know, that's maybe 10 years in between there. And it, you know, shrunk down to probably overall a quarter of the size, but it got bigger and also a lot faster too between a, a hard disk and an SSD like this. I'm looking through here. We also have um, RAM. Not a great thing to look at. And so, pull this up just to clear, clear some space. And so what we have here is also going to be three different generations of RAM. And so RAM is your, your random access memory. And you can kind of think of RAM as your, your computer's ability to like transition between tasks very quickly. The more RAM you have, the more able it's going to be to run like multiple different things at once. Um, and so this one, in the configuration it's in now, had four gigs of RAM in it, which is small by modern standards. It's like the bare minimum you can get to, or have to run Windows 10. Um, but you can see it just has two little RAM slots in there that are each filled with a two gig stick. Um, it's coming like that. With this one, we're going back a couple generations RAM-wise for our 2001, and so this one had a single 256 megabyte stick. So between 256 megabytes to 4 gigs, uh, 250 times 4, times 4 again. What's 4 times 4? 16. <laughs> 16. 16 times the RAM uh, between these two, and like I said, about an 8 year difference. The other thing that's really interesting about this one is that might be kind of hard to see for you guys, but it actually has three slots for RAM in it. And that's something you really never see anymore. You never see an odd number of RAM slots in a computer these days uh, because modern day computers pretty much all do what's called dual channeling with the RAM. You can even see on this motherboard that I have here, it says dual channel DDR3 there. And what that means is that um, the RAM sticks are kind of paired off with one another on the motherboard and they operate a little more efficiently when you have two of them than if you have one. So like two two gigabyte sticks is going to outperform one four gigabyte stick. Um, but this is before dual channeling was a thing so there's no reason to have an even number every time anymore. And so you just have three little slots in there which again is something that you never see anymore. And this one... Must be this is kind of way back. Let's see, can I take? I'm gonna try something here. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and take out this card here, which is another interesting little thing that we can talk about while I'm taking it out. Is this is I believe a sound card, which is something that our our top was bragging about. It's amazing multimedia capacity, including a 16-bit sound card. Um, computers these days don't have sound cards anymore. Um, it's just something that's been integrated into the rest of the motherboard, so having an entirely separate card is not necessary anymore. But back in 1993, having sound on your computer was kind of a, a feature to brag about. And so, and you can see why. I mean, if it takes up a circuit board, this big to get 16-bit sound. Heck yeah, he'll brag up that feature. But the question is, can I get it out? 
Yeah, there's that. Sound card. Sound Blaster 16. But the real reason for doing that was because I wanted to show off the motherboard a little bit more. Let's see that connected, I guess. And particularly, these would be the RAM slots in this computer. So this computer doesn't actually have any RAM in it right now, but those are where the slots would go. So you can see it's a much shorter slot. Um, and RAM these days, um, it's been a format called DDR for the last like 25 years or so, but this is older than that, so this would be SDR RAM, which again has been obsolete since the mid 90s. So even if we wanted to get this computer up and running, finding that type of part would probably be hard. Uh, the other thing that's missing out of this, now that I'm looking at it actually, it doesn't have a CPU. So the central processing unit, kind of the, the thing that does most of the math for your computer, would be nested right here. And you can see this one, it's empty, it doesn't have one in it. But one thing that's kind of interesting about that CPU is it's using a little bit different type of format than what our modern ones would be using. Um, this would be what we call a pin grid array, a PGA socket, that every once in a while you'll still see these days, but are becoming increasingly more rare, our pin grid arrays. Um, these days what you see are land grid arrays, and actually, do is take this motherboard because this is not a functioning motherboard well it could be but it's not obviously hooked up to anything I'm not using it for anything right now we'll take this apart we'll take a fan off and the big difference between a pin grid array and what this one has is called an LGA or land grid array is that basically with a CPU in the socket um, one side has to have pins and one side has to have pads for those pins to touch and what used to be very common was that you would put the pins on the CPU itself um, and then the pads would be on the motherboard but one of the, basically what's become a lot more common now is they've swapped that where the pins are on the motherboard now and the pads are on the CPU and the reason for that is basically that if some part of this equation is going to break, it's going to be those pins, and it's a lot cheaper to replace a motherboard than it is to replace a CPU. Um, so they put the pins on there because they're fragile and breakable, and if they break, they don't. you don't want to replace the several hundred dollar part, you want to replace the hundred dollar part. The other thing that's very different is you can see how many more pins, like I don't even know if this is going to pick up on camera, but there's uh, 1,155 pins in this little socket here around the edge, whereas this one, yeah, I'm not going to count them, but it's got slots for, you know, I could reasonably count those, it would be terrible content, but I could reasonably count the number of holes there, so you can see, you know, we've gone from, you know, maybe 100 pins in 1993 to, like I said, 1155 in 2013. And there's even more now. I think they're, uh, I think the Intel ones are up to 2,011 pins, I think is what they're at now. So we've added another almost 1,000 pins since 2013. Ah, uh, what else is kind of cool in here? Oh, we can take a look at, uh, kind of the interesting situation this has as far as its, uh, various circuit board connector -y things. So one of the things that's weird with this one is, uh, so this, this smaller one is a, an internet card, so this is what has its uh, ethernet cable and its phone cable plugged into it, so it's a separate card for this, which again, it's built right into the motherboard on this one, and this one this one actually has a separate card for it too, that's what both of these are. Um, but what's interesting about this one is it has this weird little like riser thing on it 
So this is something that you do still see on occasion are these like risers where you would plug basically this thing into, you know, one of these ports like this one here. Um, and then you could put more attachments into it. It's uh, not something you see that much anymore just because it's a, uh, it's dividing the electricity up between all those different attachments then so it tends to run not very efficiently so you don't see it very much and a lot of the stuff that used to be used for things like this are just integrated into the main motherboard now so like you don't need a separate internet card these days you don't need a separate sound card these days um maybe you have a wi-fi card maybe you have a graphics card and that's about it um so the need for stuff like this has mostly gone away these days um but it is something you see relatively commonly in older units. We'll put this back. This has changed a little bit too, this port, and I would bet, yeah, not quite. So say it's one of the things in modern computers that hasn't changed in a long time are the modern equivalent of these ports. I I don't know if these are still called PCIe's when they're this old, that's what they are in the current ones. Um, but PCIe ports have been around and not changed in probably 15 years at least. They're uh, something that probably is due for a generational update here at some point in the relatively near future. Because I mean, you can see this one, this one from 2001 still has very similar PCIe's to that one does. And I'll tell you, if you opened up a computer in 2021, it's still the same port in there too. The PCIe X16s. Oops. Oh. Took out the wrong one the first time. That's why I couldn't do it. Um, let's see, what else we got? Oh, some fun things. We have, of course, this guy here. Which, does this one have one too? It does. We have our our floppy disk drive, of course. Um, common in computers up until like the late 90s and would have been an optional feature in this one, probably came standard in this. And then this one, there's a slot for it. That's what this rectangle would be for, is you could, you could punch this out and put a floppy drive in if you wanted to for some reason. Um, but I don't know why you would want a floppy drive these days. Nothing really comes on floppy these days. Um, we also have a... Uh, this one also has a CD drive, which is probably a little bit ahead of its time for 1993. Actually, kind of cool is, again, I, I love this sticker on the top where it's bragging about all the features where it talks about its double speed CD-ROM that it has on it. Um, access data in half the time. Um, so yeah, the CD-ROM was like a feature that they're bragging about on this computer. And this one is cool because it actually has two different disk drives in it. Um, and so, why would you want two different disk drives? So you can copy information from one disk to the other one. I actually, we have a number of computers down in the basement that are kind of of this vintage, the like early 2000s vintage. I decided to go with the Compact Presario because this is actually the computer that my family had around this time was one of these. And so I remember this being a feature I took advantage of a lot because I was a big fan of burning, uh, burning CDs, which is illegal and you shouldn't do. Also, why would you ever need to burn a CD now? Because no one uses that. But yeah, you put a, a disc that has something on it in this one and put a blank disc in this one and copy the information from that disc to that disc. A um, couple USB ports there. Feature I loved about this computer when we had it. You can store some CDs in that front panel there. <laughs> okay, something that was absolutely not necessary, but something that I remember being a big fan of at the time as a 10 year old kid with this computer. Um, something else that this computer has that neither of the other ones have in them, um, but you could have is this board here. So this is not a sound card, but it's occupying the same slot that the sound card did in this computer. Uh, this is a graphics card, this is a GPU. Um, and so nowadays pretty much every CPU comes with an integrated graphics card, comes with integrated graphics that are gonna, you know, be functional for like basic um, graphical needs. Uh, but generally these days, if you're having a secondary, like dedicated GPU in your computer, it's because you're doing things like 
graphic design work or 3D modeling or playing high-end video games, basically, is the only reason you would have a GPU in your computer these days for the most part. Um, but with a lot of these older ones, the CPUs didn't have integrated graphics into them or um, the integrated graphics they had in them were obsolete, basically, as soon as they hit, hit assembly. And so you would, a lot of times with these older ones, they would come with a GPU uh, built right in. I said, if you bought a pre-built computer, if you just went to Target and bought a pre-built computer these days, it's probably not going to have one in it, though. Um, and like I said, it has its own little dedicated, uh, the top one. Top one is phone jack for dial-up internet. Bottom one is a, an Ethernet port, basically, for, for high-speed internet. Um, anything else too crazy to look at in here? <laughs> yeah. That's going to cover, I think, most of the kind of interesting components that exist in each of these spaces. I said it's kind of interesting to look at because it's interesting to look at the stuff that stayed the same. Like, now we talked briefly about the power supplies in, when we were looking at the port on the back, but, you know, hasn't changed a whole lot other than, oh, actually, one thing that has changed with power supplies. Um, one of the things you might have seen me do is pull this plug out of the power supply back here. Um, that's a feature that did not exist until relatively recently, where power supplies where you could take cables in and out of them relatively easily. Um, what we have now are they call modular power supplies that have these type of um, plugs in them. So if you want to have a graphics card, this one was for the hard drive I had in there, um, you could do that. Um, with these older ones, they just have like a bundle of cables that pops out of them and you got what you got as far as power. Like you're, you're limited to, you know, what, three Molex cables is pretty much all you can ever put into that computer with that, without swapping the whole power supply out. Um, so if you wanted to have multiple hard drives in there, you know, you're limited by how many power cables you have. If you had a higher end graphics card that needed its own separate power supply, you'd be limited to however many Molex cables you have in there. I wonder wattage-wise if it says on here. 146 watt? Oh no, 250 watt. So 250 watt power supply is probably not one you can even buy anymore. Um, this one is a 430 watt power supply and even that is low, 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 low. Like you'd probably have a hard time finding anything in the 400s these days. It's pretty much all 500 and up. And especially if you're building, again, like a higher end computer, like if you are somebody who's doing like 3D modeling, you're probably up in the seven eight hundreds by now as far as power supply goes. I don't know what uh, this one might might be buried too deep to actually be able to find that information on it. But so yeah, power power draws have increased pretty dramatically in computers over time too, as uh, as components have gotten more powerful, the amount of electricity they need to operate has gotten more powerful too, so you're seeing power supplies have gotten bigger over time. Um, a quick look at the front panel here. There's three little bulbs here, and I'm interested to see what those are for. And I have no idea what any of those icons mean. We have a little light bulb here, we have a cylinder, and then it kind of looks like a fast forward button. And then this thing that has a button with it. And honestly, I have no idea what any of that is. So that's fun. Maybe that's some more research I'll have to do and look into when I maybe do a follow up on this one eventually. Yeah, I think we'll call that more or less good for the day. Um, I said, kind of an interesting thing to just look through. I said about 20 years worth of computers here. Actually, exactly 20 years of a computer, so 1993 to 2013, um, as far as, again, what's changed, what stayed the same. Um, honestly, a lot of it has pretty much stayed the same in a way that is maybe kind of surprising, where, like I said, ports change, the numbers get bigger, but as far as, like, the actual internal structures of it, like, there was some part of me that was kind of hoping I would crack this open and it's going to be completely foreign and unrecognizable to me. Like I said, I can look in there and be like, oh yeah, that's the motherboard, that's where the CPU would go, that's a sound card, power supply, disk drives, all that stuff. It's 
you know, even though it's a computer that's almost 30 years old at this point, it's still recognizable to somebody who would be just learning about computers now, um, which I think is neat. Um, but anyway, um, Headwater Science Center is open right now. Uh, we are open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 to 5, and then Sundays from 1 to 5, so come by after lunch on Sundays. Um, if you come by at 3.30, it's very likely that we're going to be doing one of these shows out on the exhibit floor. So if you happen to swing by at that time, absolutely feel free to swing by. You might have heard some background noise happening over the course of this show, and that's people out on the exhibit floor because we're open right now. Um, and if you do come by, absolutely feel free to come by and participate. Feel free to come by and ask a question or two. Um, but tomorrow is going to be Monday, and I don't know who's on the show for tomorrow. But it's not going to be me, because Monday and Tuesdays are my day off. So if you're tired of seeing me, uh, tune in tomorrow, and it'll be somebody else, probably James or Carl or somebody. 